Hi everybody, Brian Balrick with Roland DGA in Irvine, California. Here again today to talk a little bit about uh, some color management settings that we have in VersaWorks. So you can see I've already got VersaWorks loaded. I've got several jobs set up in the queue. And let's just start with the first job. It is a trio of very colorful motorcycle images. And I'll just grow that on the screen here. Bigger. There we go. And as you can see, really vibrant color. And if you're the happy owner of one of our VG series machines, the VG2, the 540, the 640, um, the inks that we utilize in those machines are, are capable of incredibly broad gamut uh, color. Uh, very, very vibrant colors. Uh, some of the best I've ever seen. Um, because of that, when you're given an image like this, it, literally these colors could not be any more saturated or vibrant. Uh, that's the right ink set. It's going to produce these very well. Um, however, uh, you need to know what to do in preparation for color management for something like this. So let me close this out for just a second and show you a couple things. So that particular image, those three motorcycles are three photographs. I'll go to another file right here, and this might be another job from another client. In this case, it is a collection of labels, uh, and they're all vector. So there's no photographic data in this at all. It's strictly line segments that have been commanded to be a specific color within them, uh, what we call a vector design. So very different from that first job that we looked at. Uh, next job down, we've got this... Uh, fairly uh, faithfully rendered image uh, photograph of a female against uh, what is a fairly medium saturated yellow and then just a Roland logo at the bottom. Uh, so nice. It's basically just a combination of a couple elements that we have. And then let's go to the last one. Very similar to the one we just looked at. Um, and this one is again, it's an image of a female and we've got these overlaid vector uh, designs as well. So a combination, it has some data that's vector, it's got some data that's raster. So you're gonna run into this often, but you kinda need to know what you're looking at, identify what you're dealing with, to be able to know how to render it and how to apply the color settings correctly so you get good output, depending on what the client is asking for. So that's always, a, always an issue. And it's always best to try and discuss these things with your clients uh, as you lead into a job that they're asking. They're going to give you a proof, hopefully of some kind, an image to look at, and you'll immediately start to diagnose where your trouble areas might be, uh, what you know you can do well and explain, and then to get to a point where you can produce a quick test and show them and hopefully have them sign off and get the color that they are expecting. It's always best to get that done up front so there's no disappointment if they had it in their minds of what they thought the image was going to be. So back to uh, VersaWorks here. Let's start with that first one. So we've got these three motorcycles, extremely vibrant, all photographic. There's, um, there is a Roman logo up on the left. So forgive me, there is a small vector element in that upper corner. But it's very subdued, um, not as important as the key element, which is the three motorcycles. So. Let's move into the second uh, tab down, which is our quality settings. Let's go ahead and just pick a uh, generic vinyl. So this is our glossy calendared vinyl. And we're going to set up here for some settings that we know we want to do. We're going to produce these super high quality photographic style. I'll, I'll stick to 13 pass and make my usual settings here. Air diffusion is better for photographs. And I'll go unidirectional to control the print direction to get pristine band of band or uh, lay uh, every pass of color um, only laying down in one direction that creates a uniformity that uh, bi-directional adds a little bit of non-uniformity unidirectional brings that back so unidirectional is always going to be the best bi-directional is as good in a high quality but it's if you really want to go pristine you go unidirectional and then we get to the most important part for us today, which is the color management. So as you can see, it's near the bottom. I'm just going to go start with this top one and we'll click on properties. Bring this up to the top. So uh, right off the bat, the very top one, true rich color. Let me 
I'm going to leave this open for a second and I'm going to talk in general terms first because to be honest a great number of us that are in this market um, we don't tend to have to get into the underlying uh, controls or to have a complete you know dissertation of each one of these it's not as important as understanding that you have options let me just talk basically about them first true rich color is our newest uh, rendering intent a uh, color management preset it was made once we introduced these new inks these uh, the VG2 series inks uh, because they're so broad gamut so let's go ahead and pick that one real quick and I just want to show you really how it's built so we've got anything in this image that's RGB is going to be managed with the Adobe RGB 1998 uh, ICC profile that's a very broad gamut it's a very big spectrum of color in the RGB world then as we look second down we've got the CMYK data so anything within this image CMYK it gets assigned the Roland wide gamut CMYK ICC okay that is something new it's again it was made to deal with producing images for an ink that is so vibrant so broad gamut uh, the large color space that this that these inks can achieve so what does true rich color give you especially for the VG series it's going to take the image and very simply it's going to produce the most vibrant uh, image it can produce but at the same time it's not going to sacrifice things like neutral gray tones so if you can imagine if we just you know made a, a umbrella rule that just said make these color make the color spectrum that I'm dealing with in this file as absolutely uh, vibrant as possible as saturated as possible I'm not concerned with accuracy of color I'm, I'm not concerned with the uh, neutral tones of gray just make it the, the, the most vivid color you can be problem with that is you are you're gonna get some skew you're gonna get some things that really sh are gonna push into certain color ranges that you won't like like a gray tone all of a sudden looking slightly blue or red so those are not attractive especially when you're trying to control them so true rich color does a fantastic job of dealing with images when you're hoping or trying to achieve a real vibrant image but at the same time still have some uh, sense of, of, of um, uh, faithful rendering where some of the data you'll, you won't get moved like for example the, the vector data in this one the Roland logos of a mid-tone gray uh, that'll actually still look fairly neutral okay but at the same time these amazing greens yellows and reds will get pushed and they will, they will look incredibly vibrant so that's where this one this new profile comes into play so let's talk about the next one down so this would this would be a dramatic difference if you made a print of both of these and by the way a great recommendation you've gotten you've got our new machinery you've got the VersaWorks take an image like this and simply do a quick fun uh, a fun run so take a, a high quality vinyl and just produce this image across it with each one of these and make notations or turn the notes on let me show you how to do that so you just go over here to your left and we'll see uh, print job properties that's under marks it's about midway down on your left let's turn it on and you can put quality settings and color management that's all you needed and underneath every single print that you've produced it will actually include the notes and if we zoom really tight down here we'll see a little bit of them it's going to be hard but you can see here you're reading along it tells you what vinyl it's used move to the right it was using air diffusion unidirectional and your color management was pre-press us and what the settings were embedded so what a great tool so basically you're producing your own cheat sheet of color to, and again underlining right here the color management and saying this was the same image produced with each one of the color management presets again highly recommended so let's go back up we'll go back into our image here there we go and zoom back up and then go back to our color management and go properties all right uh, so real quick we talked about true rich general pre-press so again I'm just going to leave this open and talk in general terms first so we already spoke about true rich you got the idea there pre-press 
you're dealing with a, a client that is actually in that field or typically is only interested in faithful reproductions of color does not they will not care to see the most vibrant things that you can do that means nothing to these types of clients they're only concerned with faithful reproduction that is where general pre-press comes in these this particular one pre anything with pre-press all of these these are all the standards that are used globally we've got the u.s general europe and japan covered here but pre-press is important because it represents such a big market pre-press uh, pre printing is massive always has been always will be so uh, to be able to have the tools to deal with jobs coming in that you need to follow those rules they're included so again these are all about faithful color whenever you hear or see pre-press just think faithful color uh, rendering as accurately as possible and that's what these will uh, do uh, again, I, I don't want to talk too much about the underpinnings, about the hows and whys, but first and foremost, really just a, a discussion about, in general, what you can do to control some of these projects and make color work for you. So continuing down, let's talk about max impact. Uh, you'll see right away, and it's always good to have this window open, the color management properties window, because it'll show you some, I, some data that will help you understand what you're dealing with. So max impact. Uh, using the Roland Sign RGB and then for CMYK the Roland Sign CMYK so max impact remember how I talked about true rich color and about it keeping things faithful at least in uh, like a vector area or areas of neutral tones and not pushing them into a different spectrum uh, so it's still still maintaining some faithful reproduction of color but at the same time taking bright vivid colors and making them pop as best it can well max impact says <laughs> let's do this and, and it literally forces everything into the most vibrant zones of color and it's not it's not keeping things faithful at all as a matter of fact max impact you have to be a little careful uh, this is a little side note that a lot of people don't know uh, it actually has built into it uh, what is called the uh, um, the white tone uh, or the uh, paper white uh, is taken into account so literally if you have an image that has an unused area of white and you use max impact and you output the image you're actually going to see white change to a slightly odd tint you're losing your white point you're literally still late you're going to lay ink down in a white space the reason for that is max impact commands that it's trying to match the white of the media that's built into it if that makes sense so you have to be careful you'll start to see uh Im image areas uh, the insides of characters let's say the characters are white all of a sudden your characters instead of being a perfect white of the material that you're printing on it's been tinted that's why so max impact great when you want to achieve the utmost color and accuracy is thrown out the window so there you go max impact sign the display used to be my favorite uh, rendering intent or rendering preset um before we hit true rich color so everybody loved max impact it's kind of funny it, uh, basically it produces such great color but you lose that accuracy right so one notch down from max impact is sign the display again you're pushing color you're trying to in, in and as the as the name of it indicates for signs and displays uh, we we need the vivid color back we again we're trying to push the spectrum we're trying to reach these really bright vivid colors uh, accuracy I would rate this like a, you know it's 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 <laughs> it's way more accurate or it holds faithful color better than max impact max impact as you know throws everything out the window sign the display maintains some and then so basically and you're kind of getting the idea here you can see why it was my favorite before we hit the brand new one which is true rich color we didn't have true rich color um, before the vg series hit so basically a lot of jobs that i would run would be sign and display it had that beautiful mix of good faithful uh, rendering of neutrals but at the same time it pushed the color spectrum quite a bit and and gave us that that beautiful pop uh, when we needed it so it, it worked quite well uh, for a long time and then the magic of true rich color came along and to be honest 
this is the go-to now for most everything I run in the shop. Okay, so again, sign and display is good at pushing color quite a bit. True Rich is even better. True Rich is still the king of doing both. It holds faithful color, but it also takes the most vibrant sections of color and gets them to their most vivid. Okay, uh, so I would say in my shop, I run the vast majority of jobs today, especially if they're BG related on the True Rich setting. And then I'll back it down to the next one, what I consider to be the next one just below True Rich as far as color spectrum push is sign and display. And then, of course, Max Impact, I don't run all that often because, again, it's it's unfaithful. It really doesn't look at accuracy. It's it's uh, So you do have to be careful. Still a, a powerful tool and nice to have. Use it or try it so you get a handle on how it manages color. Um, but again, not as often. Uh, I, I don't run that particular profile. Uh, I'm going to finish off here with these last ones. Anytime you see max density, whether it's U.S. or Japan, um, it really disregards any type of built-in ICC and then sim simply tries to render the color as it was designed. So very simply, it's trying to, it's only going to deal with the density of color, okay, and lay that down of what it's been designed at, okay. Again, probably best for you to just play with these, but anytime you're just dealing with, you're not so concerned with color accuracies, but you are concerned with the density of how much ink is being laid down, these might come useful. And last but not least, a kind of important one too, not very often I use this, but density control only. We're basically turning color management off. And we're only now taking the data as it was designed, literally however, whatever, however color was built in the file. We're not trying to map it to anything. We're not trying to mate it to the spectrum of the inks that we have. We're not trying to create some kind of calculation to make everything look just the right way. That gets basically shut off. And all this will do now is it goes to our RIP and it says, what media do you have? And for that media, there's always going to be what's called an ink load limit. Uh, and that's all it's going to concern itself with is how much ink can I jet onto this material before it literally is beyond its capability. And that's all it's going to do. It's going to take the image as it was designed, match it to the total ink limit of the profile, and then create the image that way. Again, powerful tools to have, not very common. So to wrap up real quick, again, true rich color, favorite one in the shop. Uh, sign the display, my second favorite, still. And last but not least, max impact, important to have. Pre-press comes into play quite often, but specifically when we're not trying to create those vivid, crazy, beautiful images, we're really looking at accuracy and rendering things faithfully to um, color spaces, especially when relating to things like the pre-press market. So great tools. We're, I'm dealing with these constantly, as, as you should. It all depends on the image. So just to do a quick refresh and as we look at these files, so how would I do these? So again, these motorcycles, true rich color, no doubt. Uh, the decal sheet. If this client is just looking for crazy color, you might even try max impact and true rich and see how they render with both. But clearly this is all about just color. It's doubtful that it's, it's all about accuracy. It's mostly, it looks like this client definitely wants just vibrant color. Uh, the yellow girl stare, totally different. More than likely, this is either going to get done with true rich because it's still going to render things fairly faithfully and still push color a bit. But since things are kind of muted, I might actually take this and go into the pre-press side. Again, it, it, this might be the kind of client that does want the flesh tones to be a specific tone. You may need to run a couple of tests and see which one you prefer, but pre-press may come into play on this one. And this last one here, same thing. You've got flesh tones from the uh, photographic image of the female. You've got overlaying vectors. Uh, this is definitely a combo image. Probably, again, start with true rich. May run into pre-press depending on how it renders. So you may have to run tests. But again, that's why those are in there. It's to give you all the control that you need. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for coming and uh, see you in another video soon, I hope. Bye-bye.